The type of bow used today for instruments in the violin family originated in France in the 1800s. The master bow makers of the day used Pernambuco, a wood being imported from Brazil to make textile dye. They considered this wood ideal due to its strength, durability and beauty. Today, just like hundreds of years ago, quality bows are made of Pernambuco wood from Brazil and horsehair. To make the wooden part, called the stick, the bow maker lays a template onto an 11 to 13 millimeter thick block of Pernambuco and marks where he'll make his cuts. He follows his markings with a bandsaw, cutting out the stick's basic shape. Then he planes the stick, thinning it out, tapering it to narrow toward the front, and angling the corners to make the square contour octagonal. Next, he repeatedly heats the stick with a gas flame to soften it, and gently bends it against his knee, then afterward against a wooden form, to give the stick a very precise curve. This is referred to as the camber of the bow. Using a handsaw and template, he cuts out a piece of Pernambuco for the bow's front tip, called the head. He refines the shape, first with a rasp, then with a file, then with sandpaper. Then he glues on a bone plate to protect the head from damage. He wraps string tightly around it to apply continual pressure while the glue sets overnight. The next day, he files down the sides to make the plate flush with the wood. Using a traditional drill, he bores a hole about 10 millimeters deep into the head and chisels the hole into a trapezoid shape. This forms the hair block into which he'll later insert the hair. Next, he measures and marks a block of ebony wood to begin making the bow's frog the piece at the bottom by which the musician holds the bow and adjusts the tension of the hair. He shapes the block using first a saw, then a chisel, and rasps, files and sands all the surfaces smooth. The frog has a space on top called the mortise, into which he'll later insert the hair. The bow maker glues a decorative mother-of-pearl accent onto the side, then cuts two small plugs out of maple wood. These will anchor the hair at each end of the bow. He inserts one into the frog's mortise and the other into the hair block in the head. A bow this size requires 5 grams of hair. That's approximately 180 horsehairs. The bow maker bonds them at one end with some melted rosin, a sticky plant resin then inserts this end into the frog and anchors it with the plug. Then he bends the hairs and slides on a nickel silver ring called a ferrule to hold them together. More expensive bows often have a gold ferrule. To mount the frog, he inserts a long metal screw with an adjuster head into a hole drilled into the back of the bow. The screw operates an eyelet connected to the frog. Now he combs the hair straight. The individual hairs must be parallel to each other for the bow to perform properly. He ties the loose ends together with thread and bonds them with rosin. Then he inserts the sealed end into the tip and anchors it with that second plug. Back to the frog now. He moves the ferrule out of position, seals the mortise with a mother-of-pearl slide, then puts the ferrule back. He wraps the parts of the stick the musician holds in silver or gold wire and leather to protect the wood from wear, and brands the maker's name on the bow. Turning the adjuster at the back moves the frog forward and backward to alter the tension of the hair. The violinist tightens the hair before playing and loosens it when putting the instrument away. <laughs>